Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's talk about the transmission channels of the satellites. Every GPS satellite, and they're also known as SVs or space vehicles, have two channels called L1 and L2. There are additional channels in development like the L5 and we'll talk about those later, but the primary two channels are still the L1 and the L2. They carry what we call the carrier frequencies. Now where do they come from? Well, it turns out that also each satellite has a total of four atomic clocks. They have two rubidium clocks and rubidium, I need an I in there. There we go, rubidium clocks and two cesium clocks. And they have very, very, what we call fundamental and very steady and stable frequencies that can be used to set up a carrier frequency. So based upon those atomic clocks, and it all comes down when it comes to GPS, timing and accurate time is the number one principle of all the principles of GPS. So when you have accurate time, you have everything when it comes to GPS. So the atomic clocks are extremely important. They produce what we call a fundamental frequency at 10.23 megahertz. Those are then used to, to produce the two carrier frequencies on which you then load all the other information. The two carrier frequencies then broadcast on the two channels, L1 and L2. On the L1 channel, we broadcast a carrier frequency that, which is 154 times the, what we call fundamental frequency at 1575.42 megahertz. And on L2, we have a carrier frequency which is 120 times the base or the fundamental frequency here and that produces a signal at 1227.60 megahertz. So we have these two carrier frequencies, one that has a much higher frequency, one that has a slightly lower frequency. On those two carrier frequencies, we then load all the other information. Those are superimposed, and we'll talk about the techniques in which we do that. On these two carrier waves, we have what we call the PRN signal, which is the pseudo-random noise. The satellite ephemerides, so the ephemerides are is the information so we know the position of each satellite and the orbits of each satellite. The biggest problem with getting satellite signals in from space is that it has to go through the ionosphere so we need to have ionospheric corrections. We have ionospheric modeling and then we have to give coefficients and then update those models for the specific conditions of the ionosphere which changes on a continual basis. We also have to have the SV status, the space vehicle status, we want to have the system time, which of course is the most important thing of everything. If you don't have a very accurate system time, you will not have accurate GPS results. And then of course to supplement that, we also need to come up with clock corrections. All those techniques will be explained in later videos. What's interesting to think about when you talk about these two carrier waves is that if the speed of light is of course known at about almost 3 times 10 to 8 meters per second, then you can also calculate the wavelengths here. These two wavelengths of the two carry waves at 19 centimeters and 24 centimeters puts those in what we call the microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Why were those two carry waves picked? Because those two waves at those particular wavelengths have less interference with the atmosphere than many other types of wavelengths. So it offers a really good window for the transmissions of the of the signals coming in from the satellites and so that's why this particular carrier frequency and wavelengths were chosen. As we have discussed before, an L5 channel is being added. The L5 channel is going to improve the non-military use of the GPS satellite for general use of the population. That particular carrier frequency is at 115 times the base frequency puts it at 1176.45 megahertz and that's currently being developed with the Block 2F satellites. Those began launching in 2010. I think at this point we have about 10 or 11 of those in space. So that's now also being developed and that capability then will give us much better accuracy for civilian use in GPS. So that's the, the base frequency then produces the two carrier frequencies which are then broadcast on L1 and L2. And on each of the two channels, L1 and L2, we then superimpose specific information that the GPS receivers then need. That's how it's done.